Okay, let's begin the discussion. Finally, we have some time. Not to make a joke, but Jesus Christ. Uh, question one, why is religion so important to the movie? I was talking with that group back there. Um, and we talked about how using any kind of religion suddenly adds a lot of depth to this kind of story. It's not just about people in this life living and dying. It's also about people who enter into the next life and how dead people can affect living people um, and about the different kinds of traditions that different religions have in order to make sense of what happens after you die. So that's in the e just on a general level. But in this movie, it uses the elements of the Catholic Church. Uh, and that adds a lot of specific elements. So, for example, the Catholic Church is uh, one of the oldest religions in Western history. So there, you know, human society has changed very much since the beginning of the Catholic Church. And so when a modern society, when people in a modern society, like in this film, have to learn about the Catholic Church, have to interact with its members, have to interact with high priests who have been studying the religion for their whole lives. There are many possible surprises uh, that could be lying in wait for them. Uh, you know, regular Catholic people, everyday Catholic people, don't think too hard about uh, specific questions about how, like, what happens after you die? Uh, are, could you be haunted? Um, what if a monster attacks me, right? People don't usually consider these questions. Um, but in this movie, uh, the, the representative of the Catholic Church is not just some regular guy. He's a high ranking priest in like a secret group that is dedicated to protecting our world from hell. So you gotta think this guy knows something. He probably knows a lot about what he's dealing with. He probably has some tools, he probably has some rituals that he can use. Uh, and all of these unknown elements can add to the horror. Allison is just a regular girl. She's not even religious. And she's thrown into the middle of this situation. Uh, so the history of this religion and its long, long, long traditions can add to the horror element. In addition, uh, in terms of Christianity specifically, uh, the Christian religions believe that Jesus Christ will come back and raise the believers from the dead. So there is an actual connection between our world and the next world. Uh, then you also have all of the like fancy costumes and props and crosses that uh, are related to the Catholic Church. That's a very common element in horror, right? There's something that can protect you something physical that you can use against these uh, ephemeral zombies and ghosts. Uh, and then finally, we also have the use of Latin. In the middle of the film, Allison reads a book and sees only Latin. Latin, of course, is now a dead language. Not everybody knows Latin. Uh, and so Michael has to go find somebody to translate it. And that also creates Tension. It's like somebody from the far past is sending some kind of message to us. So it has to be important, but we don't understand the message. So what important information are we not getting? And is it possible that when we finally understand the message, some bad thing will happen? Turns out when the Latin is translated, uh, the professor says, it's from John Milton's Paradise Lost, which I actually teach in my next class today, later today, as you guys know. Uh, and instead of explaining what it means, the, the professor says you have to read the book. Well, I'm here to tell you it's a long book. It's 10,000 lines of poetry. And the Latin quotation did not have uh, a book and line number. So I guess Michael had to have, like flip through the whole book. But the idea is, why? Why can't the professor just explain it? 
what's so important about reading it in the original context? Is there more information in this story that is important for Allison to know? Is it some kind of secret knowledge, forbidden knowledge, something that if you learn it, something bad will happen? All of these ideas are connected to the choice of the Catholic Church. And they create mystery, they create uncertainty. Therefore, they create tension and a feeling of horror. Question two, how do you explain the logic of the sentinel and the demons? Basically, what the hell is going on in this house? Sorry for the joke. So uh, I talked with uh, this group and they also were very confused by what's going on. And the main source of confusion is the good guys are supposed to be the church and the bad guys are supposed to be the demons. But the way that the church chooses the next sentinel to guard against the demons seems like they're forcing somebody to do it. You would think that the good guys wouldn't force people to do things. Um, but that just links back to the fact that it's a very old church and they probably have a good reason for doing it this way instead of letting somebody like volunteer or something. So after talking about it uh, with this group, the picture we got of the logic of what's happening in this house looks like this. So basically, from the beginning of time, uh, there has been like a connection to hell, and God has sent somebody to guard that. I guess let's call it a doorway. It's not really a doorway, but let's call it a doorway. Uh, and in the modern day, that doorway is the house, the whole house. It's not like one specific door, the whole house is a gateway to hell. And so I guess like once in a while or like every time the old guardian is about to die, God chooses the next sentinel. And the church uh, learns who this person is either, I guess, by praying or they observe the house and see who moves in and is acting weird. But at the same time, as the old sentinel is dying, he gets weaker, he or she gets weaker, and so the demons have a chance to prevent the new sentinel from taking up the position. And the way that they try to do this is they try to get the new person to kill themselves. Because according to Catholic religion, if you kill yourself, you go to hell. And of course, if you go to hell, you can't guard against hell. Um, and so like in the middle of the movie, Michael finds a secret file that says, all of these people, right before they joined the church, tried to kill themselves. I don't know about you, but at that moment, I thought, oh, so the church is saving them. <laughs> no, it turns out trying to kill themselves is what the demons were trying to do. The church is just following God's plan. Uh, I think that's the missing information that could help us make sense of the whole film, which is, like, how do the new sentinels get chosen? Why does Allison suffer, et cetera, et cetera? Because God made a choice. We don't understand why God makes the choice. We don't understand how God makes the choice. But I guess he does. And so, like, the church just has to follow it and try their best to protect the new person. But also, there are still many holes in this story. How does the sentinel guard against the demons? What do they do? What is their power? Why do they have to be blind? Why are they sitting on the fifth floor looking out if the doorway to hell is in the house? And then there's like the, the board on the first floor that says, abandon all hope, all ye who enter here. Why is it on the first floor? What's, why is it covered up? Why is it written there in the first place? So many questions. Uh, so the basic picture seems clear, but I think a lot of the other details are just there to create a scary movie, basically. Question three, how does the film represent the idea of evil? So I was talking to that group over there. They noted that the demons in the movie were mostly like killers or gay people or people who looked weird, had weird bodies. 
and then, of course, the old man who is maybe too polite, polite to the point of being weird, uh, without any actual warmth, felt like he was performing the role of a good neighbor. But if we think about this, the way that the film represents evil is by presenting people who are different and strange. We see this all the way near the beginning of the film when Allison remembers how one day she discovered her father having sex with two women who were not her mother. Uh, in terms of psychoanalysis, this we usually call this a primal scene. Uh, and according to Freud, it's the beginning of how a child develops the Oedipal complex. We don't need to talk about uh, loving your mother and killing your father too much in this movie or in this class. Um, but the idea of sexuality and death and difference are linked together in this film. Her neighbors who don't really exist, the demons, they're all killers. The demons who appear near the end of the movie all look very strange. But if you meet a lesbian couple who enjoy sex in real life, does that mean that they're evil? If you meet somebody with a weird face in real life, does that mean that they're evil? So talking with this group, we agreed that the film is using shortcuts. It's using the sense of difference and strangeness and even discomfort and it's using those ideas and connecting those feelings with the idea of evil it's saying oh we're showing you these things that will make you feel uncomfortable you know why you're uncomfortable because these characters are evil um, but if many films do this then over time that could influence how we feel about people who are different in real life. Um, there is a motif in literature and film for bad guys to have some kind of disability. In James Bond movies, the bad guys usually have a cut on their face or they have a limp and a cane. In one movie, the bad guy was gay, um, which taken together right if you look at all of the movies and stories that we read and we see it's not very fair to people who are not straight and who are not healthy uh completely healthy so that's something important we should remember when we read and we watch and we take in stories these are shortcuts these are not actual representations of how people really are question four why is Allison a beautiful model and is that important? So I was talking with this group uh, about this question. They had two ideas about this issue. One is about the character of Allison, and the other idea is about the actress who plays Allison. Because in order for Allison, the character, to be a beautiful model, the actress also has to be beautiful. So we can look at this question in from these two directions. Um, so for the character, it's important for Allison to be a young and beautiful person. According to this group's answer, in order to create a contrast with all of the stuff happening in the movie, pillars, demons, uh, like being scared in the middle of the night, if it were a regular person, yeah, it might work. But if you have a young and beautiful person, it, it creates the sense that they are helpless and innocent and just caught up in the middle of these events. There is a tendency for people to think that beautiful people are good, uh, which connects actually to the previous question. So by creating that sense that Allison did nothing wrong and she is like, an innocent victim, it makes her situation scarier. Like if the person at the middle of this movie were like a, an old strong man with a checkered past, 
we might think things like, oh, is it somebody from his past who's come back to haunt him? Oh, is it actually the police who are trying to catch him? Or like, does he deserve this in some way? But by giving us a main character who is young, beautiful, and innocent, it uh, makes it feel like more random, makes it feel like it could happen to anybody. It's unexplainable, it creates more mystery, and therefore it is scarier. And in fact, it's it's so scary that we start to distrust the other humans in the story. We know that Michael is not as good a guy as he first appears to be. His first wife killed herself and his mistress also killed herself. But we even start to mistrust Jennifer, uh, Allison's friend. We're thinking, is she part of all of these shenanigans? Is she trustworthy? We don't know because compared to everyone else, Allison is is so pure and different and helpless. Uh, so that is one way to think about why the character is a young and beautiful person. But why is the actor also a young and beautiful person? Why is this important? Well, according to uh, this group I talked with, they mentioned that <laughs> this could have a similar effect on the audience. So we were talking about how there's a contrast between the protagonist and the events, but that contrast can also have an effect on us as we watch the movie. When we see someone young and beautiful like the actress who plays Allison, we feel like a it's easier to connect with her than it is to connect with other characters who are less attractive or who are less uh, typical. For example, her boyfriend has a very suspicious mustache and it, it, it creates a distance between us and him. It makes him like a character of a bit more authority and therefore less trustworthy. In this movie, authority figures are all very shady. The church is full of authority figures. The police can't help. Uh, so it, it puts her boyfriend on the side of those people who we can't really trust. So having like an, a young and attractive person play the main character helps connect with the audience. So whatever happens to that character is also uh, has a more powerful effect on us as we watch the movie. Uh, especially when things happen to her body, right? When she gets blood on herself, when she gets uh, blocked or, or attacked, uh, that also makes it much scarier when we feel like she is a beautiful person and any kind of uh, injury would change her appearance very much. So this movie was made in 1977. Uh, it's interesting to note that later horror movies in the 80s and 90s still had young and beautiful people at the center, but they were not entirely helpless. Uh, recent horror films have young, beautiful protagonists not only live, but also beat the demons and monsters and whatever. But the basic psychology is still very similar. We connect more naturally with people who we like and like to look at. Question five, would this movie work better with CGI? Uh, nobody took this question. So what do you think? Would this movie work better with CGI? Let's, let's vote. If you think it would make it better, raise your hand. Question five. If you think it would make it worse, raise your hand. All right, so most of you think CGI would be worse. And I'm going to guess it's because CGI looks fake. You can tell that it was done by a computer. But in this story, what causes the horror, what causes the fear is it feels real. If we don't believe what's happening to Allison, it doesn't feel that scary. So even though when we're watching the movie, we know it's a movie, we know that they did all the makeup and we know that it's fake blood but it's still a physical material. It's still something that the actress actually sees and actually touches. And that gives it a sense of reality that uh, 
makes the emotions and feelings hit harder for us as an audience. And that's why people like Christopher Nolan insist on using as many special effects as possible instead of visual effects, because he knows that when something is real, we can tell. Um, and so that's also why today some horror movies are going back to using practical effects like this. Uh, this is connected with the idea that CGI gives you infinite possibilities. If you can think it, you can do it. And so the connection with reality gets further and further away. Because it's not just governed by the laws of physics or the laws of religion or the laws of magic or whatever. Whatever you want to do with a computer, you can do it. So why should we care? And question six, is the movie scary? I talked to a group about this and they thought the movie was very scary. Uh, and the reason is because uh, like if you go to the movie theater today and you watch a horror movie, most of them will depend on jump scares. But this movie only has two. The rest of the time, it's all mystery. It's all like, brooding music. The use of sudden appearance, or well, not sudden, but like unexpected appearance of monsters. Uh, and the, the sense that there's some information we don't have. The sense that there's something going on that we need to know about, but we don't know it. We don't know how to protect ourselves. Um, and so according to this group, that makes it a scarier movie. If you have a jump scare, it scares you and then it's over. But the, if the rest of the movie isn't scary, it feels cheap, like you're being cheated. Like you want to see something scary, so the movie gives you something scary, but it's not a scary movie. As for why this might be important, well, if a horror film has something that it wants to say, if it has some kind of message, then making it scary can help to deliver that message. It can help you remember the movie and therefore remember how it deals with various issues. In this movie, there's not really a big important message. I guess there's something related to like sexual trauma or like the trauma of seeing your parents as fully uh, sexual adults or whatever, but it's not really developed in this film. Some movies, some horror movies will be about things like uh, childhood trauma will be about things like war trauma or sexual trauma uh, will be about things like historical trauma. Okay, it's usually trauma, some kind of trauma, something from the past that has not yet gone away. Uh, but this movie, I think it's, yeah, I don't really see any, I don't know, do you guys see any important message in this movie? Don't trust the Catholic Church? Yeah, I don't know. But for a horror movie with a message, it is important for it to be an effective horror movie. Okay, do you guys have other thoughts about these questions? Great, next week we're going to watch a movie that you recommended.